In this video, I'm going to show you some of the video additions that have been made to FireMonkey using C++ Builder. And I have two examples to show you. One is the media player demo that uses the, the media player component to play video and audio files. And also a video capture demo that lets you capture frames at a time if you have a video capture device like a camera. So first I'm going to load up the media player a demo. We've got uh, the media player control. The media player control is where the video is going to play, whatever size it might be. We have the media player component itself, which plays video for your application. I've got a dialog box component, a timer component. I've got a rectangle here where I put some controls on. I've got check boxes. I'm going to use a button here to load video, to pause, clear, uh, say whether the video is visible or not with a checkbox. I've got two track bars, one here that I'm going to use to control the volume, and I've got a label over here. I'm going to display information about the video that's being played. And I have another track bar at the bottom, which will show me the duration that I'm moving through in the video and also to be able to control where I want to be in the video. In the code, I have several things. I have the open button click, which is going to do several things. It's going to set the filter of the open dialog for the file extensions that are supported in video. It's going to use the a T Media Codec Manager class called the get filter string method. What that will do is for all the media codecs that have been registered, it'll concatenate all the filter strings so you don't have to key them in. If you want to open a specific video or audio file, then you can just set the string for the filter yourself. Uh, if you click OK and you've selected a file in the dialog box, then it enables some of the buttons. It takes the file name of the video file that was navigated to in the open dialog and saves that in the media player file name. The next line of code here, I'm going to actually check to see if that file is an actual multimedia file. But the media player, we can say, does it actually have a real media file that I can play? So if that's not null, then I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to get the video size X and Y, so I'm going to get the, the resolution, the width and height from the media file. And then I'm also going to get from the information from the media file its duration. And I'm going to display that uh, as a number of seconds. So I'll put a little the string S on the end of it. I'm going to set the track bar that's at the bottom of the form equal to the duration. So that'll be the total duration of the video from the beginning zero to the maximum of the track bar. And I'm going to set the volume to be one minus the volume that the video was recorded in. And then tell the video to play. Uh, if I pause the video, I'll simply see if the video player state so if the media player state is that it's playing then i'm going to stop it stop doesn't rewind it just stops or pauses the video and i'm going to set the pause button to play which means next time i click on it, it's going to start playing again uh, if it wasn't playing then i'm going to start playing again and i'm going to set the text back to pause because the next time i click it i want it to stop I've got a timer, and what I use the timer for is to get the current time of where the video is playing and update the track bar. That way the track bar at the bottom can follow along with the video. I can use the checkbox that's in the user interface to say whether the video uh, player control is visible or not, so I can hide the video playing. And I can use the volume track change to change the volume of the media player. And if I do the clear button click, then I'm just going to say media player clear, which will disconnect the video from the player and stop everything. The last thing is this track bar change. I can use the track bar change to set the current time. So I can say take the track bar value wherever I drag the track bar to and move the player where it's currently playing, set its current time to somewhere else. So let's run this example uh, on Windows. And we'll uh, click the load button. We'll find a file. I've got several different files here. Uh, here's one which I recorded last year when I was in Barbados, and it's uh, turtles that, uh, that were uh, being fed. So they come around where the video is fed. I can change the volume so it's, it goes away. Up here is the 720 by 40 pixels, and it's 393 seconds long. Uh, down here you see that the track bar is moving along based on that timer event happening. And I can move to different parts of the video just by dragging the track bar down uh, to get to different uh, parts of the video that I shot with my underwater camera.
we can pause the video and play it again and I can also clear and then I'm done and this same thing works on 64-bit windows works on Macintosh I can go here 64-bit uh, windows uh, rebuild it and run and I can load a video file for example this wildlife video <laughs> Let's turn the volume down. And again, I can move around in the video. And that's how easy it is to play videos. And again, if you open up an MP3 file, uh, you can also uh, play audio files. How all of this works under the covers with media playing, let me just uh, switch over to the, the header file. And I've got uh, my class declaration for uh, the different buttons and track bars and so on. There. One of the units that are available is the FMX media file. So let's open uh, that source file. So this is the HPP header file that's available. And, uh, and that has all the information about what's available in the interfaces for doing the media player, for hitting play, uh, show, hide, stop, and so on. And this is actually converted from uh, uh, FireMonkey uh, Delphi app. So let me open that file just so I want to show you how we register those codecs for the different uh, video file types and audio file types. We'll go over to the source code and it's in FireMonkey and we'll look for uh, FMX Media. So here's FMX Media Pass that has those interfaces. There's that media time scale. And then I can also open uh, the platform files. So here, FMX Media uh, Windows, uh, if we scroll to the end, you'll see the registration of the codecs. So here, T Media Codec Manager, Register Codec Class. Here's the file name extension, and it's of type video. So it's on Windows, we support AVI, WMV, MV4, M4V, MOV, and then for audio, WMA, MP3, and, and .wave files. On Macintosh, let's open up the FMX uh, media.mac file and scroll to the end. Here's the registration of the video files and audio files that are supported on Mac. Uh, MOV, M4V, MP4, AVI, WAV, and MP3. Now, if you have other uh, codecs and other media types that are media type audio and video, you can call register media codec class in your own code to support additional file types. And using these, uh, these strings, these filter strings, these are the strings that were appended on the get filter string uh, method call. Uh, those are collected up as part of the registration process. So I didn't have to key them in. You noticed in my, uh, in my example uh, when I ran it uh, that when I did the open file dialog, you see all the different uh, formats that are supported. Those strings all came from those register media codec classes. So I didn't have to worry about putting them in. So that's how easy it is to, to play video and audio inside of a C++ Builder XE3 FireMonkey application. So the other example I want to show you is how to capture video frames in C++ Builder using a FireMonkey media support. So we'll open up this project, which is video capture. I've got a dialog box here for saving the bitmaps that I want to capture. There's a little speed button here that I can click when I want to save. And there's a stop button for either stopping or starting uh, the video capture. Uh, the code is pretty straightforward. We have uh, the capture button just says if, if I click a key in a file name and click OK, then I'm going to save to file the bitmap that was captured in the image. Uh, on form create, I'm going to attach to the video camera by calling T Capture Device Manager, take the current vi default video capture device. So in my MacBook Pro, it's just uh, the built in camera on a Samsung Slate or some other device that might have multi camera, forward and backward facing camera. I can choose the different video capture devices that might be available. But since I only have one here, I'll use the default video capture device. Uh, if it's found, meaning if video camera is not null, then I'll set a little ellipse uh, to green so that I can uh, say that it's ready to capture and the camera's going. I'll set the on sample buffer ready 
event handler for video camera to to be this sample buffer ready m method that I have and then I'll call start capture uh, otherwise if I uh, don't have a video capture device it'll put on the caption of the form video capture device not available on destroy of the form when I close the application I want to tell the camera to stop capture so if I have a video camera that I've attached to then I'll stop capture on it the sample buffer ready event handler for on sample buffer ready for the video camera I'm going to use this sample buffer sync method and I'm going to synchronize that in the current thread of my application and inside sample buffer sync it says use the video camera call the sample buffer to bitmap method uh, and uh, get a bitmap and display it in the image control which is on the user interface and then finally if I click the stop button I'm going to see if the video camera state is that I'm capturing then I'm going to set the ellipse color uh, I'm going to say the stop button to say capture so if I click on it again I'll do the capturing and then I'll call stop capture uh, if if I click the capture button say I want the video to start playing I'll simply say start capture and start capture will capture frames into the frame buffer and it's only when I say to save them that uh, it'll save the images so let's uh, take a look at this first on Windows and what you'll see is that on my Windows machine I don't have a camera so it's displays in the form video capture device is not available so I can't really do anything I, there's nothing to do at that point uh, if I switch over to Macintosh, where I have a video camera on my MacBook Pro, uh, let's enable that. And let's make sure that uh, that we're connected. So test connection, yep, I'm connected to my Mac. So let's enable that platform. And let's uh, make sure and, and do a make that it's up to date. And then we'll click Run. And then... Uh, on the Macintosh side we can go and uh, start capturing frames at a time and now over in the Macintosh you'll see that uh, my camera's turned on and you're seeing me hi everybody and I can click on the save bitmap and then save it to somewhere on my hard drive and I've got bitmaps one at a time so the capture captures a frame at a time uh, when I do the start capture the frames will be delivered to the application it is until I click on the button to use the save dialog to save the specific bitmap that's there at the time that I grab it uh, we don't capture full motion video right now uh, it's frame at a time but someone else could write some code that would capture multiple frames and capture audio and save it all into a, a video format to, to create to create a movie uh, in a future video, I'll show you how to capture audio uh, using C++ Builder. Uh, it uses the same approach, instead of, but instead of using the video uh, capture device, uh, we use the audio capture device. And then over here on my shared drive, uh, I can look at some of the bitmaps that were captured. So here's bitmap 1. You can let it there it is. I'm looking down while I'm typing. Here's the second bitmap, uh, PNG, and there it is, uh, captured as well. So again, that's how easy it is to capture frames of video using the video capture device uh, as part of FireMonkey 2. In this video, you saw playing video and capturing video frames. Very easy to do in C++ Builder and FireMonkey on Windows and Macintosh.